All righty, guys. Uh, we are live here from Toronto to the world. We are already having a few guys here with us. We have Jerry, we have Luke, we have Buzz, Clinton, Federica, Sean, Mary. Welcome, guys. Welcome, everyone. Tom's, what's up, man? Oh, How are you doing? Not much, brother. Just uh, still living the sales dream here. So <laughs> excited to get going at this. Hey, um, I just... Um, I tried to warm up for this, you know, so I went down the stairs, up the stairs, because, hey, that's all we can do. Gyms are closed. So, uh, you know, I tried to kind of uh, exercise a little bit before before <laughs> we, we joined this, this webinar. As you can see, we kind of have a beautiful weather in Toronto, Canada. I mean, don't look at the, the degrees. Uh, it's just the sun, what's important. So uh, having fun here downtown at College Park. Um, you know, it's, it's funny you brought up uh, just getting some exercise because I, I start off like a lot of calls just with the exact same dad joke. It's like, hey, man, I don't know about you, but like I got my so much exercise today. I walked from <laughs> back to my home office, right? <laughs> that's, that's what we all do, man. Like, especially I know that you're a little bit up north um, here, man. You know, we're, we're on the lockdown now. Now I'm definitely seeing the benefits of living downtown, you know, pros and cons and actually living outside of the city which in this case is probably probably a better situation. Hey guys, uh, just let us know in the comments where you're calling in from, like a standard drill for the webinars. Uh, you know, we are, we're in Toronto, Canada. Um, and just let us know what you're expecting to, to, uh, to get from this webinar. Let's start setting some expectation settings. We're already having 60 people joining us. Um, Tara, hi, Tracy, Brian. Let's, let us know where you're calling in from. Ooh, San Fran, they must be having some nice weather down there. Standard stuff for them, man. Oh, would be nice. Hey, Mary. Toronto, Canada, Sean, good. Cape Town, beautiful, Chris. Welcome. We have Atlanta, we have Omaha, we have Denver, Italy, Chicago. Hey guys, welcome. Arizona, nice. Awesome. So we're going to wait for a few more minutes for, for everyone to join in. <laughs> Beautiful Aurora. Nice. Oh, that's one of my that's... good friends. Just lives down the street. What's going on, Jeff? <laughs> Shout out for you there, buddy. That's your neighborhood. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, guys. Let us know what do you expect to get from this webinar. Uh, obviously, get a beverage, uh, and uh, you know we'll get started in, in like a minute or two. Just let a few people uh, come and join us. Um, just let us know what you, what do you expect to get from this? Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be sharing lots of lots of useful stuff. Um, anything from, you know, um, your ICPs to, to like how to do an email outreach, the technical geeky stuff around the outreach, you know, how to set everything up properly and how to get the results. But, uh, let us know what are your expectations. Well, what's awesome, Ved, is I think everybody's here mainly for the same reason. Uh, it's really for that growth, right? Um, Unless some people are just here to make some friends, which is cool too. Feel free to hit us up. <laughs> but uh, I think everyone's just struggling to find really growth in this COVID time. So I I'm excited to talk to you about it too. 100%. Uh, Chris, definitely we'll be talking, we're going to be talking more about how can you optimize your outreach strategies. Uh, we're not going to be focusing too much on auto close, but we're going to definitely be sharing some of the uh, best case practices and our data from the platform. So uh, definitely, uh, you're going to be hearing a lot of that. Um, I'm sorry, getting a large amount of We're definitely going to have some uh, nice sequences for you, yeah. some eye catchers. Exactly. Uh, so Tom made sure that we have a have a proper sequence inside, and we're going to be using some of the examples that we uh, utilize at our close. Am I from the Netherlands? No, spent a lot of time in the Netherlands, but I'm actually not. <laughs> Uh, I've been living in Canada for now three years. Uh, before that, I was living in Austria. Before that, in Serbia. Before that, like all over the place. So uh, I've been, you know, from all around. So, how about you, Tom? Um, I'm raised Canadian, man. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I've been in Aurora since a baby. So that's beautiful. Awesome. Alrighty, guys. Um, it's uh, three minutes past one. Uh, let's get going. Um, do you want to make an intro, Tom? 
Yeah, sure. Um, so guys, really today is we're going to be going over best practices. That's going to get into a little of the technical stuff. But really the whole point of this is to give you those best practices to have better reach outs to people, especially like in this COVID time. Because for me, I don't know, I, I find it so hard to get a hold of people. So I've been resorting to different methods. Sequences are probably my favorite one during this time. So I can't wait to get into it. Awesome. Um, all righty, so let's get into, I'm gonna do the slides. Let's just um, get into a little bit of an intro and a background. Um, so as I said, uh, so someone said in the comments, Beth is a child of the world. Basically, that's, that's quite true. Uh, so you can stay connected with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, email, whatever you guys want. A uh, bit of a background. I've been in sales and business generally for like 10 years. I started early on uh, with my student days. You know, I had my first business, uh, moved to Austria, uh, worked with uh, basically led a team of 100 salespeople there, uh, worked with some amazing uh, big accounts, uh, the National Bank of Austria. I worked with uh, Samsung, Cisco Systems all around the DAF region, which is Germany, Switzerland, Austria. And then uh, I had a, a first uh, outsourcing company that I worked with uh, with a few guys uh, based out of Europe, then moved on to start a first startup in Canada. Now AutoClose uh, is the second successful venture that we're running uh, here. Um, based out of Toronto. Um, so yeah, definitely let's stay in touch. We'll be sharing a lot of resources with you during this webinar and after the webinar. Um, so uh, stay tuned. On to you, Tom. Thanks, Dad. Um, yeah, so a little about me. Um, I'm about 26 years old right now. I came out of Guelph University. Uh, before I got to university, I actually started a student painting company. I'm sure you guys are familiar with like Student Works or College Pro if you're in Canada. Um, I was able to grow it to about 15 people while I was in school. Um, so it was awesome. I got to grow myself, learn about sales, learn about marketing. And to be honest, it's kind of funny. I was just going door to door when, you know, I was about 17 years old. Um, so when I got out of that, I just fell in love with sales at the end of the day. Um, sales is what really drove me. I got really interested, started to read books, followed a bunch of people on LinkedIn. And right now I'm working at a company called Pace Technical. Um, it is an IT department for small medium businesses. Um, so a lot of these sequences uh, that you're gonna actually see today from us are ones that I actually send out. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I actually do some free sales training on the side too. So that's why I said reach out, we could have a quick chat, it would be fun. Awesome. All righty, uh, let's go into housekeeping expectations and some kind of rule setting. Um, so basically we want to make this as interactive as possible. Okay. So I'm seeing that the crowd is, you know, kind of really excited. Uh, we have almost hundred people here in the webinar. So feel free to ask questions, feel free to interact and engage with one another. So that's kind of really important because we're going to be, there's just a bunch of slides and a bunch of useful things. So we're going to try and dry run through it all and, and just share the best case practices and what's been really working for us. So feel free to just share whatever you guys want to share, uh, ask questions and interrupt us at any point in time. We're going to get also a little bit geeky, meaning, uh, you know, we're going to go into some technical stuff that might not be so interesting for you, but you're going to definitely get some, um, you know, bits and pieces that you can take your technical teammates to actually, uh, you know, implement and, and so that, you know, it can, it can help you in your outreach. Now, um, you're going to get very rich handouts. So after the webinar, we're going to send a recording, we're going to get the, the whole um, uh, 50 slides, you're going to get the eBooks and another um, bunch of free content. So basically, don't worry about it. You can take notes if you want just to remember things better, but uh, don't worry about uh, copycatting the slides and all that. You're going to get it anyway. Is that cool? Thumbs up in, 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 in chat if it's all cool. Let's make yeah, it. Yeah. Let's They're respect the first rule. All righty. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. So agenda for today. Why should you care? Why is it even important to, to have an email sequence? Why do you need to follow up? Why is that so important? And then what can you expect in terms of the results? Okay. Um, we're going to get into marketing email versus a sales email. What's the difference? There are so many tools out there. And how do you know what's the difference between a sales and a marketing tool? Why does it matter? Um, how to write a perfect email sequence. So we're going to give you a bunch of content that you can take home, tweak and edit. Don't copy, 
because the results that Tom is getting, the results that I'm getting from these templates doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get the same results. Every business is unique. Every use case, business case is unique. So you guys wanna uh, edit those templates, get the ideas from it, but you know, create your own templates that are aligned with your own unique voice. Um, and how to build a targeted data list. There's nothing without, you know, without the data, you, who, who are you sending emails to, right? Let's leave it at that. Um, so what is the definition of an email sequence, Tom? How, how do you describe an email sequence? Yeah, like we put the definition up there. I love it. Um, I, I think the easiest way to describe it is it's just like a set of automated emails, right? Um, so right when you put someone in a sequence, they're able to reach out to 500, 1,000 different prospects, but actually being able to customize it so they feel like it's an actual personal email you're sending. Um, but really the goal of it is to be able to track their engagement. So you're able to see when they open an email, click an email, reply one, and even forward it on to someone else just to maybe they're not the right person to actually email, right? Or the decision maker. Um, but the biggest thing is, as soon as any of these prospect um, replies, you don't want any more emails sending out to them, right? So that's when they kind of get into a warm prospect for you instead of being really cold. So right when you get that reply, they're not gonna be getting any more emails from that sequence. Awesome. Um, some of the results. Yeah, so this is something that's super important to me um, just because I used to send out like manual emails when I was a rookie into sales. Um, you can imagine how much time that takes, right? Uh, so right now I usually spend maybe two hours a week. I can write up a five email sequence. So five separate emails that'll go over about three weeks. Um, send it out to about, you know, 500 prospects. So really the goals that you want out of this, spend two hours, maybe a week max, you'll be able to send out those 500 emails, hopefully get one email per 100, sorry, one meeting booked per 100 emails. Um, you'll get that open rate, hopefully over, over 50% is, is a pretty standard goal right now. Uh, you want the click rate, so somebody just clicking on maybe a PDF that you threw in that sequence. And lastly, the most important one to me is getting that reply rate. And a reply rate could be a yes or a no. It really doesn't matter, right? Um, it's just good that someone's being able to talk to you. What's really cool, though, is actually at the end of this um, presentation, what we're going to be walking through is actual sequence that I use, which got me these stats at the 72% open rate, 14% click rate, and a 31% uh, reply rate. Um, so we're going to walk through that later. So this is something that was really cool. I know Ved brought this to my attention, um, especially when I was talking about my painting company at the start. Like, guess what? That was old school sales, man. Um, I was door knocking 12 hours a day. It was awful. <laughs> um, but evolution has started to happen in the sales world. So we got into individual prospecting. I used to go online, go to Google, start searching people's names. And right when I found someone who could be a good fit, I get on the phone and call them. That was the end of my cycle right there. Um, but evolution came in, inbound marketing happened, just like we're doing this webinar today. Um, a lot of emails are going to come in. We're going to be able to follow up with some people. And even further is we get into sales automation. This is where we actually get into these sequences where um, automation can just come out and send out like a thousand emails within, you know, just using um, two hours of your time maybe. But I'll leave the last one for you, Vet. I, I know you uh, really like, I guess, specialize in this. Ten man. Uh, so uh, we've seen we've seen it all, uh, and you know we've been in business uh, for quite some time. Even before AutoClose, we had a company called Exchange Leads. That uh, actually um, AutoClose is just the next logical step of that company. And so we've been doing it all, except for door knocking. Uh, I, I would have to bring up my partner <laughs> Sean to that. Maybe he was doing that back in back in the day. But th that's why we built AutoClose. We we figured a big need. Uh, for for sales automation, uh, and and don't look at it. You see, the, the, with sales automation and and automated follow ups, you know, it, it's just a huge. You have a huge power. You have a machine gun, right? And so the question is, how you're going to use it? So you can abuse it, or you can learn the ropes and just use it properly and use it, uh, you know, to your benefit and the benefit of your customers. How can you benefit customer with sending them emails? Well. Um, first thing first, you want to laser target them, right? That's, that's the important part of sales automation and why we're switching into sales automation as, as part of the process, you know, and, and, and the second thing, usually when you have a good demo, when you, when you, when you send a first email out and you laser focused and, and, and you've done your due diligence, um, 
there's a bunch of other things you need to do and you forget the follow up. And that's the main hurdle. That's what happens to us all. And that's why we as human beings, you know, we're imperfect in that sense. You know, we're just going to forget about things. Uh, so that's, that's why, you know, sales automation is important. And as we're moving on, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with, you know, sales and technology and, 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 and uh, generally the approach to sales and, and information, I think we're going to see more and more of this self-serve uh, extreme personalization type of thing where, you know, people are just coming, your customers are just coming to your demos with, uh, you know, jam-packed with information. So they don't want you to just, you know, give them the usual sales BS you know, they want you to really understand their business and apply a custom solution. So I think we're going to see more and more customer success um, uh, playing a major role in sales. Uh, if you guys are owners, that, that's definitely something you should, you, should, um, you should try and understand a bit more. Yeah, so Ved, uh, it was really funny. You brought up the machine gun scenario. Um, yeah. it, now that you brought that up, it just triggered my brain. Um, when I first started in sales and I first learned what a sequence was, Guess what? I blasted out a thousand emails with like the most generic sequence ever. Wasn't personalized. All I did was ask for a meeting and it was so bad that I got about 30% unsubscribe. So I just lost basically 30 emails right there. So that's why we're going to walk you guys through this, right? It <laughs> so, happened to us all. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hand raised. So, all righty. Um, how many touches to get to generate a sale? What, what's your kind of experience? Um, so it's kind of funny. Um, it depends really what industry you're in, um, especially even what decision maker you're trying to find. Like if it's a CEO, it's going to take more touch points than, you know, finding a marketing coordinator. Um, but what I found in the industry to find someone with true power, um, it's that 14 touches. And it used to be a lot less. This is part of that evolution of sales as well. It's going to take so many more touch points to actually get a hold of someone. Right. This isn't to buy a sale or anything. This is just to talk to someone. Right. Right. A hundred percent. And we, we usually do uh, this kind of 14 by 14 campaigns uh, where uh, over 14 days you have 14 touches between you and the prospect. Uh, you, you're, what you're aiming is to find them where they are, right? Where they spend time. Because again, before you even get to a sales development, before you even get to a sequence, you have to do your due diligence. You have to do your data research. And you know that there's a potential. You have a very solid assumption that there's a potential that that prospect can buy from you, right? Um, so you're going to get to that. And that's why these follow-ups are important because, hey, you're, you're, you, you know, when, when I wake up, you're not in my mind, you know, like, my, my, you know, it's, it's just, I, I get hundreds and, you know, thousands of emails. So how do you stay on top of mind? How do you do this properly? We're going to get to that in a sec. Um, types of touch points. What are some of the types of touch points, Tom? What, what, do you, what do you say? Yeah, so it was great. You were just talking about, you know what, like some people spend their time on different things. Um, so one person might be on LinkedIn, someone might look at their email, someone might not even have a phone, right? Um, so right. All these touch points, how it works is this is like a cadence, right? So mm -hmm. a sequence would go along with this. So let's say on touch one, um, you'll send that email out on day one, right? Um, day uh, touch point two, right? You send them a LinkedIn follow on the same day. Give them a call later that afternoon. Um, day, three, day two comes around. That second email will be automatedly sent out right? Give them a call again, right? Then you could obviously read the rest. I'm not going to walk you through the whole thing, but you get the idea. It's multiple touch points at different, um, different sectors, right? So this way, this is going to be your best way to actually get. So, so if you're basically selling uh, B2C, if you're sending to, to end users, uh, basically what you want to do, uh, SMS seems to be a big channel. For us who are in B2B selling to other businesses, uh, especially to auto close, we do a very solid combination of email and LinkedIn, and that gives us by far the best results. Uh, again, zero dollars spent on any ads or, or any external magnets to drive the traffic and, and the users. Now, it's interesting though, I, I, I found this um, um, uh, from Salesforce, you know, salespeople spend basically 60, 66%, so two thirds of their day not selling, right? So writing follow-ups, data entry, and now think about writing follow-ups, just think about it. Uh, you're either gonna sound uh, just generic and robotic, hey, just checking in, right? That's one option. Yeah. Uh, the other option is you're just going to get stuck in what do I do? You know, how do I approach this? How do I, you know, so basically you're going to waste a lot of time one-on-one -on -one and, and you're going to spend a lot of time figuring out, you know, uh, information about the company. How do you write a perfect uh, follow-up email that's going to, you know, just get them to think and to react and to respond and engage, right? So it's just, 
it's a mess, right? And if you do that on one-to-one -one basis, you're just not utilizing your time in the, in the appropriate way. So then there's data entry, then there's researching leads, meetings, a bunch of meetings that you have to attend, like one-on-ones and, and, and all that kind of, you know, good stuff that also sometimes can seem like a bunch of nonsense. So it's just, you waste a lot of your time. And if you're a business owner and you have sales reps, be sure, rest assured that they waste a lot of time and there's always a potential to, to improve and, and, and tweak. And so what can you improve? What can you, know, you successfully automate? Well, writing follow-ups, right? Data entry from, from your email engagement or sales engagement tools into a CRM, researching leads. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, when, I was, when I was starting this outsourcing business uh, in the software space, um, we, uh, I was the only guy doing business development. So I would spend uh, one third of my month just researching leads. Now, is that a good use of my time? I mean, Ed, you're definitely and, not alone there. I am so guilty of this too. Um, right. I'm going to be honest for right now, because when I used to work at certain companies, they didn't have all these tools for me. Right. Uh, now that working at Pace, I have a lot of these tools, not wasting my time. I don't even want to leave the company and I would never go to a company to do sales if they don't have these tools anymore. Right. Um, right. This helps me at the same time as help the company, right? It's uh, you know triple win in my mind. Um, yeah. Okay, so so let's just summarize the the intro and and you know what's uh, what's what uh, before we move on to the next part. It's like if you think about it, every sale happens in a follow up. Rarely will you pick up a phone and just close on a call. It depends on your average invoice value. It depends on too many factors, and it really depends from industry to industry. But usually, it always happens in the follow up. So. Why do you follow up? Well, to stay on top of mind, to uncover some of the uh, hidden uh, information that you didn't get from a demo or from that cold outreach. Um, so basically you follow up to figure out what's happening, you know, because you, you have to understand when you're, when you're not talking to your prospect, when you're not talking to decision makers, conversations are happening in the back end. People are talking in communities nowadays. They talk to their boss, decision maker. It's just, you know, the chat is never ending. So you, you basically, with your follow-up, you wanna get on top of that. You wanna learn and understand more what's happening and how can you take advantage of, of the, the situation and, and, and uh, offer your solution, right? Um, as, as, as Tom mentioned, follow-up can be a call, an email, it can be a contact to social media, SMS, you name it. Um, basically, you wanna structure your cadence on, on, on where the prospect is in the buying cycle. You know, if they're just researching, probably it's it's still on the marketing side. It's it's the blogs. It's it's the uh, it's the, the content that can generate uh, the useful information. So even you, you can send an ebook. You can send a, a recording like this, do a webinar or something like that uh, to follow up. Right? If they're somewhere closer to the end. This is when you actually want to ask how to questions to basically spark the mind. You know, how am I supposed to do this? You know, if they're asking for a, for a discount, you're just pushing the ball back in their court. So they're the ones actually thinking about this and making an active, proactive decision, basically. Uh, you know, always make sure that the cadence, back to my third point, right? Make sure that the cadence works for them, not for you. Don't be like, hey, just checking in, right? That's, that's not helpful. And then again, if you can measure it, you know, you, you can manage it. Like if, you, if, you, if you're not reporting, if you're not tracking your metrics, you don't know how you're doing and your sequences might be great, might be bad, but you don't know it. Um, always be, again, uh, don't, don't, don't do this for yourself, do it for your customers. 70% of the time, try add the value uh, and 30% of the time actually try and, 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 you know, hit your target. So this also correlates to, you know, seven habits of, of highly successful people, you know, always seek first to give then to take. And if you're doing that on, on an active basis throughout the year, you're going to have full pipeline. I mean, no questions about it, you know? Um, yeah. And again, don't take it personally. I mean, uh, you know, usually, uh, again, another story, we, uh, we do have an autoclose. If someone says, hey, I'm not interested, unsubscribe me, please remove me. I'm not interested. The system will mark them as, as, as do not email anymore, basically like unsubscribes, right? Uh, however, what we do, my teammates, we usually wait for 24 hours and then we send another follow up. Hey, you can't fault me for trying to just a sales rep trying to make a living, you know, uh, not going to bother you again. And then some useful resource and guess what? 10% re respond back, even apologize because it, it is what it is. You know, you get nervous, you, you, you like you're, you're locked in uh, in your ap apartment or a house and you know, it's, it's never personal. Right. Um, so Tom, you have anything to add here? Um, you know what? I think you did a great job describing that. Um, it's yeah. kind of weird, but I'm looking in the chat right now. We were just oh. 
talking about uh, turning your blinds down, but hey, we'll get them next time. Um, okay, that next time, yeah, for sure. Oh, we'll we do it right now. There we go. Wow, look at that, proactive, right? Proactive, man. We've got one cool question here that I think yes. you can answer. Um, it says, is there a way to integrate auto email sequence with auto LinkedIn sequence? Uh, that's something that's very, very challenging because LinkedIn is a very, or Microsoft, so to speak, is a very, um, has very locked APIs. So definitely there's, there's a way to integrate it, uh, but it's, it's very difficult. And first thing first, you, you have to have a formal partnership with LinkedIn to do so. And most of the time, like I, I, don't, I don't know a single company that can uh, combine them all together successfully. I'm pretty sure there's not a single company. So I think you're gonna start seeing that more often, but not at this time. Their API is very, very closed um, for, for external partners. Alrighty, and, and just a food for thought, you know, would you hold the wheel if you had the option not to, right? Um, so just think about that uh, and think about the automation in that, in that sense. Um, alrighty, so part one, we're gonna go into marketing email versus sales email outreach. Uh, and you know, what, what, what is the difference? Well, there's a technical aspect to it. So on the left-hand side, there's a great company called MailChimp. I'm gonna pause here and just say, we use MailChimp at AutoClose and we use Intercom and we use SendGrid because we have more than 100K subscribers to our sales newsletter. So this is great for sending marketing emails for people that opted in, okay? People that subscribe to your newsletter, they wanna receive your marketing, uh, uh, et cetera, hear about you, your info, about your business, et cetera. So that's very important. Now, you can't even send cold email using these platforms that I named. They're, these are great platforms, but you can't use them for cold email. You're gonna get banned. So for cold email, you wanna use platforms such as uh, AutoClose, such as Outreach, et cetera. So these are the companies mm -hmm. that you wanna utilize for cold email outreach, okay? And a little bit of a technical details, as you can see here, the left-hand side, this is one of the newsletters that we just sent a few weeks ago. Um, and as you can see, reply is to some MailChimp server, right? Same thing, the mailing list has its own, um, has its own unique set of codes and protocols. Um, so that is something that you, that you wanna consider and we'll see very soon why. Now on the, on the right hand side, if you see one of the follow-up cold emails that, I, that I've sent to, to my list, you can see that it's mailed by AutoClose, it's coming from me. So basically all these tools, they facilitate sending emails in your name. So that's, that's, the, that's the difference, right? Now to begin, like let's just get the elephant out of the room uh, and, and you know, some, I think Henry asked a question. <laughs> can spam is called emailing legal? The short answer is yes. As long as the email adheres to specific can spam requirements. So what are the requirements? What's the, you know, how can you be a can spam compliant? Well, to begin with, avoid deceptive subject lines, which is, you know, buy this now, or, uh, you know, someone hacked your account. And then, you know, obviously that's something that a lot of people would click, although I do not recommend that you do that. Never, never click on these deceptive subject lines. So that's one thing. Um, so provide a clear opportunity to opt out, right? So you have options to unsubscribe. You can just write a text. Uh, if you don't wanna hear from me, please unsubscribe, right? Just write back unsubscribe or something like that. And there are tools which just automatically unsubscribe, understand the context and just automatically unsubscribe people. So that, that, that's, uh, that's a second requirement. Third, be honest and clear about who you are and where you are. What's that? Well, address. You know, you have, a, you have to have a clear business address, intro about you, your title, and, and always be intentional, right? Have a clear reason why you're reaching out and the value that you wanna provide. So if this would be illegal, it's almost like preventing you to do business. And it's basically the only thing you can do is marketing. So who said that? I mean, so these are the requirements. Uh, and believe me, we've been through many situations. We have 6,000 users on the platform. We've been through many situations. Not a single one uh, was related to any Canadian, US or European laws that are trying to prevent spam. Again, you have a huge responsibility. Uh, we, we, at Oracles, we give you a lot of trainings and onboardings uh, free of charge. So you can always talk to any of our teammates just to make sure that you do everything correctly. And we're gonna cover most of it in this presentation, okay? Um, marketing email platforms, going back to a comparison. So marketing email platforms, some of the advantages, well, you can mass email thousands of people in a minute. So imagine if we have a list of 100K subscribers, 
uh, you know, I'd need a lot of email accounts to email them all at once, right? So there, that's not a point of it. So that's why we use MailChimp, SendGrid, and Intercom to send our emails. So that's that's one of the advantages. It's very easy to design, so you can create these pretty HTML emails with images and all kind of great stuff, um, links, etc. And it's great, as I said, for newsletters and blogs. If you have a lot of blog posts, you can you can do that. Some of the disadvantages: while you're sharing one server with a bunch of other companies, uh, emails usually end up in a promotional marketing folders. It's, it's different a little bit for, for Gmail and Outlook, but basically you'd end up mostly in a promotion marketing folder. Uh, if you get a lot of bounce rate, you know, if you, if, so bounce rate you usually get, you know, if the email doesn't exist or, or you're not cleaning your emails regularly because, you know, people leave companies and there are a bunch of other server issues that I'm not going to get into. But if you're getting a lot of uh, high bounce rate uh, and you're doing a lot of cold email, basically you're going to get kicked out from these platforms. And again, it happened to me some five, six years ago. So that's that's definitely gonna happen with these platforms. Now, some of the marketing results because you're sending lots of emails are, uh, you know, somewhere, it depends again from industry to industry, by no means I'm, I'm suggesting that this is this is your standard, but in B2B, this is what you get. In B2C or e-commerce, you, you tend to get a bit higher numbers, but this is what you get uh, in, um, in the, uh, uh, to be now the sales email platform some of the advantages is you can automate follow-ups and some tedious tasks again whether it's a follow-up on a contract whether it's a follow-up on an invoice whether it's a cold email sequence um, so you can you can you can automate all these kind of follow-ups uh, all of the emails are very personalized they're going out from a technical perspective from your servers from your emails so you are sending them again think about it you schedule a campaign and then emails go one by one the, the server went, uh, the, 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 the product went like two, three minutes, then sends a second, the third, the fourth, the fifth email, et cetera. So it's almost like you're going in and sending those emails. It's just that you automated that part to, to an external product, right? Um, and, and obviously they're very, very targeted, uh, which, is, which is a big advantage. Now, disadvantage is realistically, you can send more than 500 emails per day. That's limited by your email providers, such as Outreach, such as Gmail, G Suite. Although we always recommend you get the G Suite, which is the business account for Gmail. Um, so around 500 emails and you're safe. Um, and of, of course, in the beginning, you know, you need to set up your cadences. You need to learn ropes, such as uh, if you're sending 10 emails a day, tomorrow you can't send 500. You, ha you know, it, it, from, from a Gmail's perspective, Outlook's perspective, it'd be like someone hacked your account. So they'll block you for 24 hours. Okay, so start with 10, move on to 20, move on to 50, move on to 100 the next day, et cetera. So slowly work your way up. Uh, but we're gonna teach you that very, very soon. Now the sales hey, results- just go back on that slide just for a minute? Um, right. You know, one, dis one big disadvantage, and a lot of people gotta work up, uh, look out for this too, is being careful who you're sending these emails to. Because um, it's happened to me. I might be like halfway through a sales cycle and I'll start them in a sequence saying, hey, need new IT, right? And they're like, what? And they get all confused. So just making sure, make that a note. You got to go through each kind of email you're going through with these personalized ones, right? Awesome. Good point. Sales results. As you can see, all of these campaigns, they don't have hundreds of thousands of people in a campaign. They have very moderate uh, moderate numbers of leads, like 55, 134, 130. And what you're seeing, it's a dramatic increase in the engagement. So there's like around four or 5% reply rates on the standard emails. But the, the main reason why we have four or five here is because I obviously optimize for clicks. Usually I don't have time for a lot of back and forths. That's why we have a lot of sales development reps who are, who are doing the, the prospecting, active prospecting. But when I do it, I usually I do either promote something or invite people for a webinar or follow up on quotes. So my main call to action is to get a click, you know, to get a click on a demo, to get a click on a quote, et cetera. So some, some of the summaries, uh, Tama, let, let, you, let you sum up what we, what we just uh, went over. Yeah, of course. So like when you get any of these clicks opened and you're able to see this um, with these sequence platforms. So when somebody opens their email, somebody clicks on it, somebody even replies, even if they say no, um, the first thing you should do is not just go crazy and start like calling them right away. Um, but be calm first, right? Give it just a few seconds, cool your gears down, and then you're going to give them a call, right? I don't care if they said no, yes to you. Um, they just opened it, they clicked it, whatever it might be, give them a call, right? I'll tell you right now when everybody, um, you'll get like a little notification saying, hey, somebody opened, guess what? You know they're by their computer, you know they have their phone in their hand at least, um, so they're gonna be able to pick up their call. 
Uh, so this way you have about a thousand percent chance higher pickup rate just when you know somebody's opening an email. Um, so these pickup rates really skyrocket. But right away, you gotta be calm and collected, like I said, right? Just don't start going into like a huge value prop and all this, right? I just ask them like a simple question, just go into it, be like, hey, you know what? Like I'm from AutoClose, like we help people with blank, blank, and blank, right? I don't suppose that would be you, right? I just ask for that meeting, right? When they say, yeah, we have a problem, that's when you get the meeting, right? That's all these right. email sequences are really for, it's just to give you that real action to be able to call them for almost a reason, right? Um, right. If, they don't, if they don't pick up, send them that email, right? Send them a new manual email, make sure it's really custom to whatever they wrote and get in touch with them again. 100%. We have actually a couple of good questions. Jason, does the 14 days, 14 touches, um, and the goal numbers apply for enterprise level sales as well? Um, definitely. 100%. Again, it's, it's just a different approach. So uh, when, you're, when you're selling, you know, uh, 70K deals, uh, it's still not, it, it's enterprise, right? But you still want to get to the right information, to the right person. So all these automation, automations would help you there to get the, to reach the decision maker, right? It's just going to be longer. So you're going to do 14 or 20 touches to get to the first uh, milestone, then maybe 10, 15 to get to the second, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of the same thing. It's just longer, right? It's a longer cycle. Um, um, and we have Pierre, uh, what is the learning curve for the system for someone who is new to sales and automated sale? Well, uh, I would say realistically, it's up to two weeks if you start playing immediately with it. So that's, uh, that's you know, definitely something, you know, if, if you never heard of it, if you're just totally new to sales, uh, basically you'd need like, you know, 15 days to get around uh, the, the email sequence. But now my, my general, uh, if, if you're looking to hire sales development reps that, that have no experience at all, you're usually looking at six to 12 months to get a return on investment. To get one to five, uh, you know, one to three return on, you're, you're looking at six to 12 months. But in order to start using these tools, if you're familiar, to, to, if you understand sales and how the sales functions, it's basically, you know, it takes you one training, one call to, to get everything set up. That's at least what we do at AutoClose. So- Yeah, Ved, I, I think you're right on point there. Like even yeah. from personally, I know you've been doing it forever probably, right? Um, but when I first started using sequences, it took me about a week, two weeks. I thought I was like super proficient at it. Um, right. So it's that quick learning curve of the software after that, it's a no brainer. hundred percent. All righty. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll answer uh, Tara's and Graham's question in, in a few moments and we're going to cover it during the presentation as well. Thanks yeah. guys for, for asking. Let's keep it interactive. Um, how to write the perfect email sequence. Now here comes the fun part, right? So there are a couple of points or, or uh, important parts to when it comes to email sequence. Uh, First, there are some technical aspects that we're going to get into in a second. Again, I'm not going to go into details. It would be a separate session how to set that up. But I'm also going to show you an example that a non-technical guy can do it. I just did it for, for, for some of my other gigs. I just set up the, the SPF, the KIM, and all that. So it's not hard. Just have to read online. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, give you good resources for that. Subject line, body, uh, multimedia, and what that means. Uh, why do you want to add that? We'll see the results. Uh, call to action, signature. You see, call to actions are a really fun one because a lot of people are like, hey, Ben, I'm not getting results. I'm like, okay, let's, let's look at your email. There are no call to actions. Not a question, not a link, uh, nothing. So, so what do you expect? I mean, it's, it's just as simple as that. So we're going to get into that signature. Why is the signature so important, right? Uh, Follow-ups and reporting. So we're going to get into that. These are the parts, your, your important parts to, to an email sequence. Now, the technical checklist. Now, this is literally a checklist. So you take it home. If you have a technical person, give them this. So when, when, you, when you purchase a new domain, right, you want to set a, a handful of protocols to make sure that the emails that you are sending are uh, basically... Uh, uh, there are certain protocols that are proving that that's you, just to, to keep it as simple as possible, okay? So there are three things, three records that you wanna figure, uh, that you wanna configure on your DNS domain register. So where you registered your domain, that's where you have a DNS. So you wanna configure SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records for that. That's super important because otherwise, uh, you know, someone can introduce themselves as, as, as you um, yeah, and, and basically the other servers can block your emails and push them into a spam. So your deliverability will go down very hard if you don't have this configured. And again, 
this is not a webinar about configuring your, your technical aspects to, to, to a domain. You should, all, by the way, you should always do this. No matter if you use cold email outreach tools or you don't, you should always have this in place. So I'm pretty sure if you have a good technical person, they already done it. If not, uh, you, you should definitely do it. Uh, you should always add from name and image. So you know how in, in Outlook and, and, and Gmail G Suite, you have the option to, to add your name, your full name, not your email, but your full name and an image. That really, you know, it's super important when people are, because just, just look at your inbox and go from left to right. What do you see first? You, you see the image, you see the name, you see the subject line. So it's really important to have that. Um, signature, make sure to add a signature. We're gonna talk about that in, in a second, how, how it should look like. And then you should warm up your email with friends and colleagues. So again, if you just, you purchased a domain, you just started your business uh, and, and basically you, uh, you just started blasting people with like 300 emails a day is just not good. It's, it's just not even, you know, it's not even possible, right? You go from, from zero to 300 to 500. It's just, it's something is fishy there, right? So your emails are not going to look like, uh, like they're, they're, um, uh, they're coming from you, right? It's going to sound like a, a robot took over your account. So what you want to do, you want to warm up your email with friends and colleagues. You want to subscribe. You do like normal email activities. You want to subscribe to newsletters, et cetera. Uh, and again, don't, you know, push the pedal to the metal, take it slowly, you know, do a few emails a day and then uh, work your way up from there. Avoid spam. Okay. So if you're using a shared IP address, that's, that's probably not good for you. Um, is this recorded? Yes, Sean, it's recorded. Uh, use, use the free email addresses. So I really don't recommend you use Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail. Like when I see a person, there's just a bunch of people reaching out to me. Hey, uh, uh, you know, uh, I want to write a, a, a do a co-blog with you guys. I want to sell you this, do that. Like, and I see a Gmail, uh, John12345 at gmail.com. Dude, I'm, you know, you're going into my spam. You're marked as spam, done and over. I'm not even considering your email. If I get the email from a professional, uh, uh, pr from a professional, basically, that's lengthy. And I never, I don't even know about them. They, they, they haven't even earned the right to talk to me, right? Immediately spam. So these are some of the things that, uh, that you want to avoid. Now, if you have more than two spam words, such as free, get, now, credit card, all that are big no-nos. If you have two spam, more than two spam words, if you have more than two links in your email, guess what? You're, and you're going to end up in spam. So make sure you're conscious about that. Um, if you have lots of images, lots of videos, same thing. Um, if you are emailing, let's say 20 people from Microsoft, with the same template, guess what? Their server is gonna block you and that's it. They're not, they're not gonna see your email. So do one person from a company and then work your way up, ask for a referral, et cetera. Um, and then you wanna personalize your email with custom fields, which are tokens or variables. I'll give you an example. So what my guys do um, at, at AutoClose, they basically would go to your LinkedIn profile when they're building lists, they would go to your LinkedIn profile and take some of the sentences that can correlate to what we are offering and to what we think would make sense for you. So you'd have an entire personalized paragraph that's taken from your LinkedIn. So, you know, and if it's a short and sweet email with a very clear call to action, it's, it's just, you know, that's, that's something you're going to respond to. And now I just want to show you real quick, um, uh, Thomas, you can, you can respond to some of the, the, um, questions while I do this. Um, okay, let's do desktop two. share. You should be able to see my entire screen. I'm gonna click this. Now there's an interesting tool called um, MailTester. MailTester.com, it's free. Uh, so you can play around with it. And there's a help article that I'm gonna share with you. So there's a there's a, an interesting help article from AutoClose that talks about SBF, DKIM and how to set it up. So I'm gonna share that afterwards. Uh, and then there's a mail tester, uh, a free tool that will tell you what's your score. So as you can see, I, I, um, I would send an email to a dedicated email address just to see if, if, I'm, if I'm gonna pass the spam filters. So there's a tool called mailtester.com that you can use for that. And if you look at, uh, my message, you basically see that, you know, I'm properly uh, authenticated. I'm not going to share more details here, uh, but, uh, but that's, that's basically what you should be, what you should be using. Alrighty. On to the next slide. Yeah, but um, why don't you get to some of these questions? They're more pointed at you um, and auto close awesome. to dive in there. I'll definitely do. Uh, the, the, the only point is we, we have 20 more minutes and I want to leave um, questions for the end and we have lots of good and useful content. We're still, still warming up, still warming up. Okay. <laughs> when and where do you read your emails, guys? Let's, let's do a quick poll here. Uh, let's do launch. 
Okay, I just sent a poll to you. Where do you read your emails? Is it a desktop, laptop, or mobile phone? Let's, let's just uh, see what we get from this audience. Okay. Very interesting. Alrighty, so we have uh, around 33% uh, people are, are are consuming their emails on a mobile phone, uh, and then we have 50% on a laptop, which is which is very interesting. Usually, when I do these polls, I usually get a mobile phone, and that's that's the that's the number one way I consume my my emails. So usually, uh, what happens? Let me let me share the results with you guys. Um, perfect. So you can see the results. Um, very very interesting. Uh, most of the emails that I get, I consume on my mobile phone during the breaks. You see, we, we, we spend time in Slack, which is, uh, or, or Teams by Microsoft, which are, which are the, the chat tools uh, that you can use to communicate with your teammates. So we don't spend a lot of time uh, in, in our emails. And so what I try to do when I'm on commute, when I make a break, I usually skim through my, my, uh, my mobile phone and I just respond to emails like directly. Like I don't wanna spend a lot of time in my inbox. Uh, and so I just like to create that almost kind of tennis match type of a thing where you do back and forth like real quick in real time almost. Um, okay, let's go on to the next next slide. Um, copywriting skills. I'm just going to uh, go quickly through these. So write as you talk. You'll see very soon, even the Harvard Business Review, a couple of years ago, they, they, they made, um, made their statement, you know, do not use these, you know, business savvy kind of words. Just be, you know, be you, okay? The shorter, the better. Again, most of the guys, okay, I see some people are consuming it on the, on the laptop in this group, at least it's 50%. Uh, but also like, so we have 26 people who are consuming it on a laptop and 18 on a mobile phone. So it's kind of increasing, it's trending, right? So make it quick and short. Uh, the hook, what's the purpose of the whole email? What's the purpose of the, the whole email that you're sending? So don't be generic, don't be robotic. Uh, have that, what we call in marketing, the hook, that's gonna get people to open up the, the email, right? Um, Copywriting skills, just a couple of words uh, and, and, and you'll have that for yourself later on. Uh, just really creates an urgency, just released, right? Um, now, new are the second most powerful words that you can use. Uh, I'll tell you that for, for whenever we have a new feature launched inside auto close, people are like just, whoa, it's just open rates are up. So that's, that's, that's really useful to use uh, in, inside your subject line. Uh, from my friend, um, insider's view, uh, all these words are, are just very, very powerful. So use them with care, but do use them. Um, irresistible, like it says here, it's an expensive word, but from time to time you can use that. So when I launched uh, the ebook, uh, it, was, uh, it was around irresistible and uh, you know, something that you, that you gotta read. Uh, and uh, and it's just, it just boosts the, the, the CTAs and, and open rates. Um, like I said, at your earliest convenience, like this is old school. I mean, as soon as you can, right? Like just, it's, it's not how you talk, right? In the light of the fact that, just use because, because is a very powerful word. Like don't go, like there's no need to be formal in nowadays world. Like people work from home now. It's just a very different world that we're all into right now. And so, you know, thank you for your courtesy and cooperation regarding this matter. Just be thank you, thanks. Do a smiley, do an emoji. It's fine, even with corporate clients, you see with a governor of, of, of Austrian back, uh, a bank way back when uh, in, in 2015, we had you know, back and forth with emojis. I mean, we're all humans, you know, so just, just be, be more you, okay? Some of the subject lines, Tom, back to you, some of the subject lines that you might wanna share, uh, we, we actually co-written co, uh, this one, so uh, you, can, you can actually share some of your experience. Yeah, so uh, I've been using uh, quite a different subject lines. Like we report every type of subject that we have. So we're able to actually see that open rate. That's what subject lines do, right? Um, so we found a couple of cool ones that do work. Um, talking with that, just putting like, hey, the number one sales mistake is, right? Leave them with some curiosity. That way they're probably going to open that email, see what that is. I'm curious what it is, right? Um, hey, can you write any email that copy that converts, right? Have a question, right? Um, the biggest one, my favorite ones, putting a first name, putting their name, put the company name, whatever it might be. That is my favorite. When I walk you through my sequence, you're going to see it in every single subject line, right? Um, you could also do very something that, um, I guess, ways you could relate with them. So if you know they have an early, um, early stage sales team, if you know they're a startup, write that in the email, right? That shows that you know who you're talking to. Um, so there's a couple more there, but hey, we'll leave that guys for you, okay? Right, again, 
you could do even a longer lengthy subject lines because you see, we really expected that the short sub subject lines are the best and, and they really do perform well in most of the situations. So when, you're, when, you, when, when you don't have time and you're debating, just do a short subject line, okay? But then also your sales guys can get creative. I'll just use one example. This is just a cold email hashtag. We use this uh, as, as just a funny, funny subject line. Our, our VP of sales, Adrian, used that way back when. Uh, and uh, and it, it, honestly, you'll see the email later on. It was, it was just hilarious. And, and he received like, I think over 50% reply rate. So it was a huge engagement. But then like it always happens in, in, in marketing and sales, it's a bell curve. So if you overuse something, very soon you're gonna find yourself at the, the other side of the, the bell curve or, or the extreme. So it's you kind of, you should change, uh, change your game. Um, Alrighty, so there are a couple of, uh, when it comes to a body of an email, there are a couple of techniques that you can use. There's a bunch of them online. Uh, we actually, we use two in this, in this presentation. So one is the, the standard problem, uh, agitate, solve uh, type of thing where, you know, you first start with the first name on average and then there's a pain point, right? Uh, and, and, and a question, right? Is your company achieving that particular goal? So you're, you're basically trying to get on the, on, the, on, the, on the main point of the email and then you go into a pain point and how you can relieve it. And there are some stats, right? That can, that can connect to that. Uh, this can easily get, um, this can easily become a lengthy email. So don't do that. Think of this as a funnel. Right, you just want to get the quick engagement. So it's almost like I invite you to play a tennis match. Uh, my partner Sean Finder, he was a, he was a tennis pro here in Canada. So so like imagine if he calls someone for for a tennis match and th and then he starts you know just shooting the balls at a person, right? Like it's it's not a match. It's just like you know it's just a savage thing to do. So you basically want to chit chat. You want to go back and forth, back and forth. So that's the whole point of it. And you end up this this um, uh, 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 email with uh, with a referral. Of, or how a competitor uh, is, is utilizing your product or a service to solve this pain point, okay? And then there, there's before after bridge, which is basically you're trying to do a bit more of a storytelling. You know, Sean, I noticed that your SDR positions are open for quite some time, right? A fact. It's hard to find the right person to do the job and the lead gen suffers, right? Your top of the pipeline suffers. So I would love to show you how AutoClose can remove that burden. We already helped Software Inc. and Google making their uh, number one rep feel like a 10 people Salesforce, right? Would you like to discuss how we can help you too, right? So that's, that's, that's just one of the examples that we use. Uh, and, and it's a very short, it's a quick uh, email. So if you look at it on a mobile phone, if you do a preview on a mobile phone, you don't have to scroll. Just open, there, there you are. You can just skim through. So that's easy to reply to. Now, this is a funny one. Uh, there, there are pros and cons to this email and it, it, it refers back to a subject line. This is a cold email. So uh, does, the content doesn't matter here. What matters is a screenshot of Adrian's calendar. He can just, just ask, do you want your calendar to look like this? There, there you go, right? Let's Who doesn't want that? If I saw that in an email, I would be <laughs> the meeting link right then and there. Exactly. So then there are spam words. So you want a software that can tell you which are the spam words and mark them and highlight them so you can change that. In this case, you can see that now and free are, are spam words, which is okay. So you're around two spam words, which is fine. If I have three, four, five, you should definitely remove it. If I have more than two spam words, more than two links, you remember that from, from a few moments ago, you're going to get into a spam. So your del deliverability rate will go down. So you want to change that. My, my best sequence to date. I think that's you, man. That is me, brother. Thank you. So we've been uh, using sequences for a few years now. Um, this sequence that I'm going to show you actually gets modified. So every time I send it out, I'll see the poorest email that got the worst results, like say it was email two. And guess what? I am replacing that with something new in there. Um, so I've been able to build it up. It didn't start at 31. I've gotten it there. Um, so let's walk through it real quickly. Um, so just with the first one, um, like I said, I'm putting their first name every single time in every single one of these emails in the subject line. Um, I'm going to put it very brief, new year, new IT, right? They're going to be like, oh, it's because I just want to trigger something in their head going, oh yeah, I'm supposed to look at IT this year. So let's check this out. Um, so very simple. Like I said, I got to keep this very kind of social, um, keep it social with them. So I'm going to say, hey, we, we spoke or I reached out to you in 2019. Um, we were going to give you that free IT gauge uh, for whatever their company is, right? It keeps it personalized now. Um, very simple. Hey, here's a meeting link um, if you want to get that done still. Um, so big three bold, um, bold reasons of why we're meeting, right? So reason for the meeting, find that improvements. Worst case scenario, give them a win-win, right? Even if they see what we do for them, 
If they don't like it, they just bring it back to their old IT guys, right? How do you lose? Um, and then why us? We work exactly whatever their industry is. So let's say we, um, we deal with a lot of law firms. Um, so we're going to put, hey, we deal with directly with the law firm industry with over 65 companies in just the GTA. The GTA is just where we deal. So that's why I have that there. And lastly, throwing in their company name. So this email looks like I have literally wrote this out and said it to them personally. Perfect. So just a second one, same thing. First name, very simple. It's Tom, right? He's going to be like, oh my God, I got to know who Tom is, right? He wrote it in the subject line. Um, just putting following up. This people gets them to open that email. So just the same thing. I reiterate just what I said. Hey, I just followed up a couple of, from an email a couple of days ago, right? Same thing. Uh, put their industry in there, right? Make all these, like put in those custom fields everywhere you possibly can, right? Lastly, I end off with a question, right? When was the last time you had that assessment? So just like that call to action that Ben was talking about, that's one example of it. Um, this one, Jim, final thoughts, right? Like I'm giving them an out, right? Just uh, open this up and you can just tell me no, no worries, right? So, hey, I assume uh, you're not interested. Totally fine, right? Give them that out. Let them tell you a reply is a good thing if it's an even a no, right? So what I do here is I leave them with a PDF. Um, you could definitely do this where you'll just throw a PDF that was, I don't know, I gave them an IT resolutions plan at the start of 2020. So maybe it'll open that, right? So I'll see a click rate and then that'll know that I could call them, talk about that PDF, right? So here we go again. He thought the one, the last one might've been the last one. So, hey, Jim, did you catch my last email, right? Right, his first name. I'll give him that PDF again. Sometimes I'll let him know if I'm gonna call him, whatever it might be. Um, so very simple. Hey, if you just haven't had a minute yet, just uh, send me a reply, it's fine, right? So very simple email, go to the next one there, bud. Um, this is my favorite one. Um, this is where I get a little gutsy because I already know this guy has a reply. Um, so I just ask, are you still interested, right? Right off the bat. Typically, I want to improve this subject line too because I think it should be funny. Um, I was actually reading off uh, Sam Nelson, if any of you guys are familiar with him, and he put something like, hey, Jim, I know I'm being rude. Um, and that gets people to open up that email. It's kind of funny too, right? Everybody wants to read why you're being rude. Um, so right here, I put three, one of three, wing, um, three things that why he isn't spoken with me. So, hey, you're also with your current IT provider. I should stop bothering you. The second, um, you're interested in hearing, but just can't get back to me. And the third, I don't know, you either got hit by a bus, won the lottery, retired, and you're living on a private island. But if it's number three, in that case, send me an invitation. So this gets them kind of laughing, and you'll be so um, surprised that this is my highest reply rate. They might say, ha ha, Tom, that's hilarious. I love your persistency. Just give me a call, or let's just pin up it down in time, whatever it might be. Um, so it, this way, it really shows um, or really gets them intrigued. I love that Tara just put in here, like your silence says you're interested. I love that. Um, that's one that I'm, I would totally add to my email. Awesome job there, Tara. This is, this is superb. Uh, so the, the, way, the way you can spice up these uh, kind of emails, uh, if, you, if you really wanna be like, you know, you're, you're sending all this different content, you're trying to add a value, or you're just doing cold outreach. So, uh, Basically, there's there's one question I want to ask you: What media is most likely to elicit a reply, right? And and based on the the sales hacker research uh, from from 2018, I think uh, LinkedIn and video were the top two that are actually going to get your reply. So that's just a very interesting thing to have in mind uh, and a very interesting stat. So people just consume video in a, in a better way. Now, video can be part of your sequence. It can be part of the first outreach. It can be part of the nurture part uh, and it can be part of the end cadence as, as we see here, but that's gonna be sent out to you so you can, you can consume and ask questions later. So this is how your personalized video would look in the sequence, right? It would be, in my, in my case, then see if a demo seems too big of a commitment, watch articles in action, just record a demo and guess what, it's 15 seconds and I can see the reports and analytics how much uh, did Nancy watch specifically watch specifically in this in this particular email okay um, now call to action before you earn your right to ask be make it quick yes no questions request a connection request a referral so these are people just want to be helpful and that's the whole point of it right people want to help uh, now, after you earned your right to ask be very specific with a date and time this is a good good old uh, good old um, uh, 
tactic, provide multiple uh, choice options to A, B, C, D, just like Thomas did in, in his last email. So there are different, different techniques that you can make it really easy for people to engage with you because that's what you want. You want them to engage. Uh, signature, now this is an interesting thing. I, I know we both have, have to add something here, but I'm just gonna make it quick because we're already at the top of the hour. So signature, make it very you know, clean and simple. Uh, as you can see here, I only have one link right? Because in my email, I'll probably have a second one. And you remember, if you have more than two, three links, you're going to end up in a spam. Not always, but most likely. So you want to you wanna update that. Uh, you can also add the unsubscribe text. But in my case, I don't do it because these are personalized emails. I write them. I send them to you. It's just that I automate it. Who sends them? I don't go and click myself, but the bot does that. But I did this. E I, I created this email for you, right? So I don't do that. Um, and the system will unsubscribe them automatically. Um, some of the follow-ups, uh, the sale happens in the follow-up. Remember that, uh, you know, Ben, I wanted to circle back on my email uh, below regarding setting auto close up with a free trial. Are you free for a 15-minute demo this week? This is kind of a lazy follow-up, but it's still okay. Uh, John, if a demo seems too big of a commitment, you've seen that one. I understand that this might not be for you at this time. Do you mind helping me understand why? No budget using a competitor. I don't need more sales, bad timing, stuff like that. So that's also that's also an option for the follow-ups. Now, the reporting, I know that Tom has some really good uh, inputs here. So, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Uh, Tom, what, what, what do you say when it comes to reporting? Yeah, so you know what, uh, just like I said, when we first started with a sequence, we had awful results. Like we had that like 2% reply rate. But what was awesome was you notice when we were sending out like those five different email sequences, we saw the weak links, right? So we could just replace that one, put the good one in. Like um, I just had, a, I think it was Richard here who mentioned like, yeah, like I would delete the, are you still interested email? But the reason I have it there is because I had reports and stats to prove that it worked for me. Um, like for that certain email, I think it was around an 80% open rate just from, are you still interested, Jim? Um, maybe it was because it was my fourth email. I'm not sure why, but hey, I'm not gonna fight with stats, right? Um, 100%. So what I really loved, um, we're able to see that A-B testing just like um, Vet is able to say, right? So this way you can test what's working, what's not working. So, but hey, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's pretty simple. Stats are the answer to success here. When it comes to stats, you can see some of the main stats such as open, click, uh, replied and bounced. Uh, these are the emails that are not delivered, bounce emails, right? And then some tools also have like a contextual reply statistics, meaning, how many positive replies have you gotten? How many out of office? How many unsubscribes? How many are not interested? So that's that's an interesting thing that you want to look into analytics. Also, when you look into a campaign, this is how it can look, right? This is a sequence that we use at AutoClose. Uh, Tom shared his, uh, but this is also what we use with, uh, with A-B testing. So all these that have a little win icon here, are winners of the A-B test. So the system automatically chooses winner based on the reply rate, click-through rate, okay? And the next step, you wanna have the aggregated dashboard, which basically gives you what, what's the best day uh, to send uh, to send your email based on the open rates, what the, was the best hour, et cetera, et cetera, the warmest prospects, the most clicked links, et cetera. So these are, these are the interesting things. Now, learning by doing and from mistakes, I'm just gonna name a few, sending a generic email, just getting right into your ask and what, you know, without even earning the right to do so. Uh, pressing send without editing, that can be a mistake, but also it can be, it can be uh, you know, it can prove that you're a real person. So there are little tweaks that you can do there. Uh, there's a bunch of other things, you know, just making it too long, like we did with this presentation, but we just wanted to, by the way, we, you guys are feel, feel free to, 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 to uh, you know, to, uh, go back to your meetings and, and whatever you guys have, because there's going to be a recorder. We're going to continue with this for the next five minutes. And then all of you guys, <laughs> Doc is saying not too long. This is great. Good stuff. Awesome. So yeah, we're just trying to pack everything up in this presentation. It's going to be live, but uh, but we're going to continue with uh, with slides. Again, learning by doing, there's a, there's a 10 mistakes, the most common mistakes you can make. We can always go back to that. Part four, how do you build a targeted data list? Which starts, all starts with the la laser uh, kind of uh, focus and it starts with your ICPs, ideal customer profiles. Tom, what do you, what do you say here? Uh, how, how do you stay focused? What's, what's an ideal customer profile? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Every time. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I love this because we used to just buy random lists. Um, we used to just buy lists, fill in our CRM and just start dialing away, right? Um, right. But what's cool is you're actually able to like buy a more targeted market nowadays. Um, you can buy like a list that just focuses on law firms, let's say, 
Um, so you're able to actually focus your calls and you can, can sometimes get like cell phone numbers or whatever it might be to really help with you getting to these clients, right? Or potential prospects. Um, so really it just helps you with that faster sales cycle. Like the big thing is, is I was wasting so much time calling dead numbers. Um, 50% of my day or 50 calls a day would, I wouldn't get through and I would know I wouldn't because it wasn't even the right number. Um, people right. are changing, new people are, let's say, getting new jobs um, out of work because of COVID, whatever it might be. So I don't want to waste that time. So updating that list, um, automation is the way to go with this one for sure. 100%. The way you can smart target, uh, this is, you don't see it here, but it's it's uh, based on a book called Predictable Revenue by Aaron Ross, a good friend of ours. Um, smart targeting, you know, you focus on ideal industries, companies, uh, you research the themes, and this is basically goes back to the first question we received, you know, is this applicable to, to like uh, uh, big ticket sales or larger, fairly larger? Uh, definitely it is. You always want to start with smart targeting. It, this precedes your sequence. You can't do a successful sequence if you don't work on the data, if you don't have a proper data, and if you don't do your homework, who can you actually target? And if you don't know, then don't expect from sales guys to bring you the results if you don't know who are, who, who are your ideal customer profiles. If you don't know who are, who are your ideal customer profiles, well, then give them at least six months, three to six months to, to, to figure it out and to make their assumptions uh, and to try and prove them. So that's what you want to do, right? If you're starting a new business. Uh, so smart targeting is really important. You want to focus on the revenue potential and likelihood of winning. So if you get a lot of no's, I know Thomas, you're very particular about this, so we can do a follow up with that or they can just book a call with you. Uh, you know, just we were talking about this while preparing for the session. Uh, just mark, mark deals as lost. Who cares? Like if, if you tried, you, you, you followed up, you went back and forth and you see that you know, you're just, you know, tire kickers, like you want to focus on those that want to say yes. Okay, so six options for you to build your list. Again, it's very important. You remember my mistake back from the, the outsourcing days. I spent one third of my month just researching the data. If you're not focused on that, don't do it. Um, you have six options. Use your own database and inbound leads that you're getting from marketing departments. If you're a larger company, you get a lot of ma magnets on your website or whatever online. You go to conferences, well, not anymore, but you used to go to conferences and collect these inbound leads. Beautiful, use that. Find a good database provider. A bunch of database providers are out there. You have AutoClose, you have Zoom Info. There's a bunch of data providers. You can outsource it. Uh, you can go to Upwork and outsource it. It, it's a little bit mundane, but I think it's um, uh, you know it can prove it can prove valuable. You can do semi in-house, semi using the the, the third-party software, which is also fine. So you so what what what, what do I mean by semi uh, in-house? Well, you go on LinkedIn, you figure out who are the companies you want to go after, the decision makers, and then you find someone to look for emails and and uh, phone numbers, direct dials, and all that. Uh, uh, just uh, so so that that's very kind of that's you can do that. Uh, hire in-house usually the worst option. I mean, if you're a large company, then definitely hire in-house. If, if you have you know, 10 to 50 sales reps in your company, don't do it. You can outsource it uh, and, and just don't worry about it. Um, if the SDRs, A's are about to do the research, that's by far the worst option because you want them to be selling, building relationships and closing, uh, obviously with a K, not with a C. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and you don't want them to be doing this, okay? And finally, your CRM, your contacts become dirty very soon, very, very quickly. Uh, basically after three months, you know, sales reps, recruiters, they change jobs all the time. Uh, basically want to validate your email. So it's important to validate the emails, not to kill the business. And now interesting thing, Thomas and I, we really like this slide. You see, auto close is an email automation, but no single channel will effectively target all of your audiences at every stage of the buying cycle. Ain't gonna happen. So this slide is super important. You wanna utilize email automation. You wanna utilize LinkedIn. You wanna get on a call. You wanna send that SMS. Do whatever it takes to find your decision maker. Right, Thomas? Well, yeah, you know what? Um, I totally agree with you because email sequences will not work on their own. Um, they do have to have kind of that substitute with you calling, with you sending a LinkedIn follow. Right. I'm not going to say you're never going to get a meeting book from them, but to really enhance it and get that results that you want, 100%. you got to put them in a cadence, right? Get all those different types of touch points. And I just want to, you know, uh, bump in this slide. I was thinking whether I should do it or not, because again, we don't want to make this promotional, but uh, email sequences and, and, and having a dedicated database have helped AutoClose to climb from, from, 
the unknown company or brand to top 50 sales products on G2 Crowd for 2020 in only two years. We went to 6,000 customers in two years uh, only by using email sequences and slowly adding on to our brand on LinkedIn, et cetera. So if you definitely, if you want to check out AutoClose, you can always email me at that at autoclose.com. I'm going to provide my email. So you can always email me. And I'm going to personally respond. Same for Thomas. Uh, also, you can always visit autoclose.com. We have a couple of nice books, uh, uh, especially to the ultimate cold email outreach playbook and the B2B sales handbook, all free, all online. So visit autoclose.com to get more resources. Back to you, Tom. Yeah, cool. So um, as you know, I sell IT, but just for fun, I actually just give out free sales training. Um, we're in about the top 10%, about like 1,500 IT companies for growth. I'll tell you right now, the big reason is process. Um, so you might not know what to do right when you kind of get that email and someone says, let's meet. So that's actually what I teach in about an hour, hour and a half session. So feel free to reach out, send me an email and we can set some up. Awesome. Uh, final slide. Any questions? What's worked for you? What hasn't? We're going to try and, and, and answer as, as many questions as we possibly can. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us 10 minutes over, over the, over the uh, planned time. Uh, questions? That wasn't too bad though, Vet. I think we uh, got a lot of information in that hour 10 anyway. We were okay. We were okay. Um, so we have, let's, let's answer some of these questions. Doc is asking, you mentioned personalizing uh, from their LinkedIn profile. How does that work at scale? Very good question. Well, if you find a partner online that can do this for you, or if you can find a dedicated, you know, junior person that can uh, do the data search for you, if, if, if that makes sense, uh, definitely do so. So we already have uh, data scientists inside our company. We, we, we scrape different uh, different uh, databases and information and provide the database ourselves. So it's a proprietary data, proprietary process. So we do that ourselves, uh, but you can definitely find a partner. You can you know, just go on Upwork, find someone and, and they'll do this for you. Um, uh, Tom, do you see any question you would like to answer? Um, um, I'm gonna give you uh, Chris Roos right now because you know what? Oh. To be honest, I feel like I'm gonna learn from this. Uh, what is your feeling about using liquid syntax to randomize your emails if you're sending to more than one person per company? To be honest, Chris, I'll be just straight honest with you. I never heard of liquid syntax in this case. Me neither. So, <laughs> okay. so that's, that's very good. That's very good. I'm gonna ask my product manager about it. So it's, it's just, let's leave it at that, okay? Just being honest here with you. Uh, all righty. So that's something to be answered. Let's just do email me at that Um I love awesome. Richard just adding in like the, um, yeah. the videos add in 10% open, right? Totally true. I love yes. it. Twofold for sure, Richard, twofold. Uh, okay, we have Pierre, a uh, question from earlier from Tara. How, how do you reconcile the 100% rate uh, when anti-spam is causing this to happen? Uh, well, there's a, obviously that's part of the software. So we do have a ton of bots and AI and machine learning that's dealing with the contacts, context of, of an email. That's how we do the replies. That's how we deal with open rates. I'm not saying that ain't gonna happen, but as you're seeing, like we, I've never had uh, 100% uh, open rate up. So it, it usually doesn't happen. We usually mark them as bounced emails. So I hope that answers your question. It's, it's part of the software, it's part of the code uh, and, and, and there's a process for it. Um, Sean Feindergrad pre presentation. I hope you liked it, man. I hope you learned something new as well. Um, Tara, uh, oh wow, we have lots of lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's good. Uh, absolutely, my email is perfect. So we're gonna email you Tara for sure. Okay, um, you'll make that note, you got her. Yes. Um, do you uh, ever mix indirect snail mail as part of the mix? Uh, Doc, can you can you give us more info on that? Uh, or Thomas, do you know what what this means? No, I'm I'm not familiar with it. Okay, uh, good job, guys. I've been selling for over 45 years, and this will really help the new guys and even many older ones do the same thing. 100%, 100%, Richard. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, my target market is pharma manufacturing hospitals and oh yeah, manufacturers, automotive manufacturer. That's for sure uh, a very interesting niche, uh, Pierre. Like we've seen a lot of customers in, 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 in manu who are going after manufacturing uh, facilities and, and, and whatnot. So it's just very, very interesting uh, market. Uh, unless does auto close database contain these markets? Yes, 100%. So we can, we can talk about that. Uh, let me do that at autoclose.com. Just email me and we'll, get right into it. Uh, Snail mail question, do you ever use physical, oh, physical mail like postcards as part of your sequence? Dog, that, that's just absolutely amazing. We don't, but um, 
you see, I would, I would prefer you guys do that more than ads. Depends on your business model. Okay, let me draw a line here. It depends on your business model. It depends on the industry. It depends on your customers. But in most B2B cases, do a snail mail uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and definitely send this, send this out. Uh, thanks, Chris, uh, for, for, for the accolades. Uh, lots of customers on Facebook. It's a good place to go like them, like them and follow them. 100% Richard. So uh, a good tip there. So Thomas, can you provide just email? Someone's asking. Um, so just, just add your email to all panelist entities so people can, can reach out to you. So this oh, is a yeah. great question for Facebook. Um, so if you get the emails, right, and you start prospecting, you can import them into your Facebook for business and then retarget those emails if Facebook can match their email with their Facebook profile. So that's a very, very good strategy, uh, Richard. Uh, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not definitely not saying that ads are bad. It's just, I would always do the hard work first uh, and, and then push them all into a Facebook targeted audience. So you can, you can definitely do that and just follow up with them. So that's, that's just beautiful. It's a, um, it's a good question here. Oh, we're having still lots of questions coming in. Uh, okay, so let's see what else we have. Uh, what is the best way to send individual, no, visual invites to conference attendees to attend a private event uh, within email or attachment? Hmm. So um, I would definitely do like, a, a, if, if you're doing a, a personalized outreach uh, test, that would be my, my go-to lazy answer, just A-B test, see what works. But yeah, you can always send it as an attachment. Uh, if you're sending it for the first time, in the first email, don't do any attachments or images because if you never send to these guys, you might end, end up going into a spam. So that's, um, that's um, something to, to kind of have in mind. Um, yeah, Melissa, personally, um, like if you have these guys' contact info and you met them at maybe an event or you have their information, you already know they attended something and you want to invite them to a new one, man, give them a call. Um, calling would be the best way to do it just because they know yes. you, they know why you're calling. Um, so it's really easy to set up that appointment and you can handle objections. That's the only um, emailing, right? Because they could just say no and say, see you later. 100%, man. Like just get a phone call and, 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 you know, make that call because especially nowadays people are at home, you know, sitting in front of their computers, watching CNN or whatever, binge watching TV shows, you know, so if you call them, definitely going to reach the right person. You just need to have the right dials. So again, data, very important there. We still have 42 attendees. Uh, I just want to appreciate everyone. Uh, this was, this has been a, an interesting ride. Uh, uh, you were awesome and super fun. Thanks so much. Uh, that's good. Hey, Thomas, like this was, this was good, bro. Um, going to make sure that we have all the follow-ups and notes uh, for people. And uh, I really appreciate everyone for, for taking their time to, to listen to Tom and I. Yeah, guys, that's awesome. Thanks a lot for joining. Um, I'm sure this isn't the last time you're going to hear from so Take a good look out for us, okay? Beautiful. All right. Stay safe, guys. Talk soon. Bye.